Okay, we want to look at water here. And we're going to use water to set up what an asset is, what a base is, and give some fundamentals to understanding the whole thing. Now, what I've drawn here is a whole bunch of water particles. Um, here's the water, it's H2O. The first question that you want to go through and think about for a little bit is, what would this be, what would this be, and what would this be? So if you want, pause the video, try and come up with an answer for what those three chemicals would be. I'm going to go ahead and write the answers out. This first one here is H+. So it's not just hydrogen here. When these particles change from one thing to another, it's not the entire hydrogen that moves, the electron remains behind. So this one over here is hydroxide, where that oxygen has some negative charge on it. We'll write that as OH minus. And then this one over here is a hydronium. And you really could consider that positive charge to be on the oxygen or the hydrogen itself. It's really not kind of 100 percent clear on that. Kind of the both of them share a little bit of that positive charge. Uh, so we'll just go ahead and stick that there for now. So what I want you to understand first is that as these water particles are moving around, so when we have a sample of water, that the things inside of it are in motion, and not just when I swirl them around, but even when it's perfectly still, that the particles themselves are moving around, bumping, they are changing their positions relative to one another, and they're not really spaced out that far apart as I've drawn. Some of the times when they collide, they can hit really hard and in just the right way, where one of these moves from one to the other. And so if I, if I have that happen, if I have, oh, let's say this one here, this hydrogen leaves there and comes over here. And what I end up forming when I do that is I have a hydroxide and an H3O plus. And so we want to write that reaction out. So we have two H2Os to start. I have an H2O and an H2O. And those are colliding with each other, and when they do, the hydrogen ion can move from the one thing to the other, which ends up a result of forming the hydroxide plus the H3O plus. Now, when that happens, it is possible for that to then happen in reverse. And so this reaction is not just going to happen and then never happen again, it's also going to happen where this can bump into this, because this has negative charge on it, and this is positive charge, and they can attract, and that thing can go back. And so we have a reversible reaction. And when we have a reversible reaction, we, we have the potential that at some point, the rates at which those occur are going to become equal, and we'll establish what's called an equilibrium. So what we know from equilibrium is we can write an equilibrium expression for water. Now these being liquids, we're going to ignore that equilibrium expression is going to be the hydroxide concentration times the H3O plus concentration. It turns out that at room temperature, this equilibrium constant is about 10 to the negative 14. Or is 10 to the negative 14. As we change our temperature, that actually can change a little bit because if you think about it, these particles start moving faster, the rates at which those two processes are going to occur are going to change. And actually, the equilibrium constant ends up getting bigger as temperature goes up. But from this, we can take a look a little bit to start at how much of each of these things do I have. So at equilibrium, at room temperature, for neutral water. This quantity and this quantity are identical because any time I form one of them, I'm forming the other. And starting with two water particles, one's losing the H+, plus, one's gaining the H+. Plus. So for every one of these I form, I must also form one of those. And so therefore, these must be equal. And in order for those to be equal, and the product to equal this, each of those must be to the negative seventh. Now if we look at what 10 to the negative seventh is, it's 1 10 million. Or written out, it is 0 0.0000001 mole. If we look at how many water particles we have, if we're looking at a full liter, we would have a millionth of the particles would be, I'm sorry, not a millionth of the particles, but it would be, um, what am I trying to say here? there would be 0 0.00001 moles of H3O plus and hydroxide per liter. If you look at how many water particles there are in a liter, there's a little over 55 moles, somewhere between 55 and 56 moles. So let's round up. If we have 56 moles of water 
and this is how many moles of H3O plus or OH minus ions we have. What that means is that you have 560 million of these for every one of those. Which means that when we look at water at a, at a scale of like how much of this is water and how much is hydroxide and how much is H3O plus, those amounts are almost negligible in scale or relative to the number of water particles. It turns out though that there are things we can do to change this uh, interaction that we have going on. So one of the things we can do is we can put another type of particle in there. So if we make a new one, we're going to use green and yellow, and we're going to call this particle HF. So HF, on the other hand, when we put this in here, this might be more likely to cause an H plus to go over to the water than the water particles are. So this is more acidic than water, although maybe it's not going to happen all the time. So if we put a couple of those in there, there's one here, there's one here, there's one here, and this has this, and this has this, but this one, that H plus transfers over to this particle, and we end up with this. We want to look at what is that reaction showing us. So that reaction, we have HF plus an H2O. And that's turning into an H3O plus plus a fluoride. But really, that could go back, and so it would probably make more sense for us to write this as a reversible reaction, where we could end up with equal rates, and we could even end up with what we call an equilibrium. And for this one, we would have a different expression. Now, we would say that the equilibrium expression for this would be the concentration of H plus or H3O plus times the concentration of fluoride divided by the concentration of the hydrofluoric acid. Um, and this is something 10 to the negative fourth, I don't remember the number that goes in front of that, um, but, it's, but it's larger than this KW. Uh, but really, this is one giant mixture where this reaction is happening and this reaction is happening. And so when I increase the number of H3O plus and this goes up, that's going to cause them to react more with these and this amount's going to go down until I reestablish that equilibrium that I had going on for that reaction. So by putting H3O or HF in here, all of a sudden I change this, where this amount goes up and this amount goes down, and we can see that reflected if you've learned about pH and pOH, that in an acidic solution the amount of H3O plus ions go up, and therefore my pH goes down, and my OH minus ions go down in amount, and so my pOH goes up. Is that right? No. Maybe. Anyway, I think I'm mixing them up. But there's another thing I can do, and that is that I could add another chemical. So we're going to look at now adding some NaOH. Now when I add NaOH and I put that in water, this sodium ion breaks free from this hydroxide, it dissolves, it dissociates, whatever you want to call it. So I'm going to now have a sodium ion in here, and then I'm now adding in hydroxide ions to go with it. So there's a hydroxide here, like that, and we're also going to have another hydroxide. So this one right here, I guess. So when we do that, that hydroxide is going to react with this hydrofluoric acid differently. And so that's going to end up reacting with that. So let's go ahead and write out what that looks like. Now the sodium ion doesn't actually take place, so really what we're looking at here is now we have the hydroxide reacting with the hydrofluoric acid. And if we think about what we'll end up with in solution when we do that, is we'll end up forming the sodium ion and the fluoride ions will just be ions in the solution. We're just going to write the fluoride for now, plus a water molecule. Now this reaction these two things are going to react, and then this is done. 
this can react with this, but it's not going to necessarily turn back into these two things. This is going to react with this to form, oh, I'm sorry, yes, yes, that is going to be, be reversible. Uh, I'm sorry, but this one is going to be heavily slanted where we're not going to end up producing the hydroxide ion in the same way as what we started with. Uh, and so now we can go back and use the products of that as initial states in this reaction to look at the reversibility part. Basically what I'm trying to say that I'm getting a little muddied on, this will happen to completion. The products of that will then reestablish an equilibrium using either this reaction or a new reaction where the fluoride reacts with water to make the hydrochloric acid and hydroxide. Um, but it's a little more complicated than just reversing this because this will happen to such completion in the first place. Um, so what we have here is we have two different reactions going on that are both based on equilibrium. And then in this one, we have something complicated going where now we have kind of a neutralization going on that's more stoichiometry based. And so in my class, we do ice charts to analyze these and we do BCA charts to analyze these, but then the products of this can be used within the ice chart to set these up. And so acid and base is very complicated, and so it's important to take some time to understand what's going on in the solution that changes uh, whether we look at something as an ion or whether we look at something as a compound to the entire ionic formula. Uh, and then it's also important to distinguish between is this something where the particles are bouncing and they're gonna change back and forth, or is this something where when this and this meet, that that's over and now all of a sudden this is gonna turn into sodium chloride and water. Um, yeah, so this is kind of an overview of like what the basics are when you're gonna look at this. And then from there, we're gonna get into some mathematics on this that I'll leave on a separate video kind of in the description.